Hello and thanks for tuning in. I'm the Handcraft Bandit and today we will be making this fancy hand painted leather sheet for the Palo Santo French Edger. As you can see it has a button that holds the sheet into the handle and if you ever bought one of these you know they come in with this foam protector I was using it like this for a couple of weeks now but I got annoyed by it and I said why not make my own one so let's do it given this opportunity I'd like to also teach you the mindset the basic mindset behind uh, coming up with a new template for your tools or whatever you're planning to build. I'm using here a veg tan leather as usual. I will be painting it by hand in a bit, you'll see it. And yeah, you see me here just folding the leather together the way I think the sheath will uh, end up as a final product. Um, don't be shy to just cut as you go, as you can see me doing here. Um, measure it, fold it. This might look like it's complicated, but it's not. All you have to do is start marking the leather where you think you'll place cuts and where you think you, the leather will bend and so on. And yeah, just follow this process and you'll be able in no time to come up with your own patterns based on the shape of the tool. You see me here marking the, the first, I don't know how you call that, where the tool gets thicker, uh, just for me to be able to draw the straight lines needed here. And if you use a mat like I have, the green one, you see the white lines on it. So all of all those lines are, all those sc small squares are one by one centimeters. And that's what I will be using to cut straight lines here. So here you see me now marking and drawing on the leather. If you want to skip this step, just go into the description of, of this video and download the finished pattern. I digitalized this for you. It's free for download and I hope you enjoy using it. I can imagine what you're thinking right now about creating a pattern like this, especially when you see me doing it straight on the leather. It's, it's really not complicated. Um, before I started doing this, I thought the same about my uncle. That always amazed me how easy it was for him to come up with a pattern for a new design and I always thought of how hard it must be and then he just told me just just do it and you see it's it's easy and that's my advice for you now it's the same just do it watch me doing it and start creating patterns for yourself and I know Maybe the first one you'll be creating won't, won't be the best one. But then at least you have created a base that you can take now onto the computer or onto a new sheet of paper and build on that. You see me here um, rounding the corners. Um, when you download the pattern, you'll see all corners are round. But if you prefer them square, just leave them square and yeah it's it's whatever you prefer now 
I think this is the last cut that we have to place and then we have the yeah we have the pattern okay now let's place the tool on it and see how it will close at first I thought on wrapping wrapping the, the, the strap twice around the handle you see me doing it now but then I realized maybe that will be too thick so in the end I cut it down you see here I'm already having issues with wrapping it around like that so I realized maybe it's better or easier to just cut it and place a button in there and now let's proceed to the fun part the painting I've chosen a purple leather dye in this case it's it's a new one for me and I really like it so if you remember from my painting video start with thick lines leave some gaps between them as you can see me doing here and then with less paint do the thin lines in between unfortunately I was holding it here too high but now you can see it the swab has too much paint on it so I decided to do the edges first before I fill in the gaps if you end up with too much paint on your swab just get rid of it on, on your painting background and then fill in the gaps with the thin lines as I described in my leather painting video that's how it looks like and I still have too much paint on it just repeat the process until your piece is painted When you've done that, take your edge creaser and start working onto the edges. The one I'm using is again one from Palo Santo. I might be doing the next video on this one, how to make a leather sheet for this tool. Enjoy. Usually I do not paint the back of my leather but in this case I figured out that it might be good to paint at least the top part because otherwise um, you'll be able to see the not painted leather and it doesn't look good in this case so with the remaining paint in the swab I'm painting the top part you don't have to do it but I, I like it. The next step is the gluing process. And as always, I'm using a water-based glue. Shake the bottle if you use a, a similar one. And then just apply a thin layer on the leather. What I discovered here is that unlike in my other videos 
you don't have to apply glue on both sides. I realized it's it, with this type of glue it's enough if you apply the leather on one side and then just fold it together. When you're done with applying the glue, um, take your favorite clamps and maybe if you haven't done already, wrap them in leather so that they won't leave marks on the leather. And then leave it like that for around 5 to 10 minutes. The glue won't be hard in 5 to 10 minutes, but it will be hard enough to hold the leather in place so you can start the stitching process. When the glue is hard enough, remove the clamps, remove the excess glue, if any, and start the stitching process. Take your wing dividers, set it to your preferred width. I usually use four millimeters, draw the lines, and punch the holes. This time I decided to go with the red thread because it provides uh, an interesting contrast to the purple hand painted leather. So, as usual, I measure the thread by hand. I leave a small piece at the beginning, wrap the leather around the length of the punched holes, and then I take three times that length with a small bit of, uh, of more thread at the end. See, three times. And in this case, I decided to take the stitching off camera if you want me to do a stitching video, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, uh, I'll see you when I'm done with that. And here it is, the finished stitched product. Looks great. and. Believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. The next step is something new for me and probably for you. This is my new tool, the Edge Creaser. Uh, I wasn't using one of these since... Uh, mm, I just lost my words. So, what I wanted to say is, uh, this is a new tool for me and it really makes a difference you see this side has the line in it this one ha doesn't have it it just adds a new level of professionality to your product that simple line is perfect and you see me using it both ways once going towards my body and then using the bottom edge to go the other way around that allows me to put a line in there that will stay there forever without having to heat up the tool because when i started using this i was heating it up as i saw it on youtube on other channels but because i don't have the proper torch um, it kept it kept staining my leather with black black yeah not nice stains that's why I'm using it this way. What a beautiful end result. The next step is to finish the edges. I'm using as usual Tokonole, the clear one. 
I apply it with my finger only and that's it. With the edges being done now, all we have to do is to apply the fastener. I recently got some new buttons. I got them off Amazon, I believe. Yeah, it was Amazon. And I've never used them. They're way more easy to apply than the ones I usually use. So yeah, this is the last step and this is how the final product looks like. Enjoy it and if you like the video, don't forget to like it. If you want to see more of this, subscribe to my channel and let's build an amazing community together. I hope you learned something out of this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.